This is Level Up Success Podcast with Neth and Truth. Hey, how you doing, friends and family? This is the Level Up Success Podcast. And welcome to another episode where we always bring knowledge and power to our listeners. So tell me, Nate, how are we going to start this right now? Hey, how you guys doing today, man? I hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, so, you know, as far as today, um, topic, um, I just want you guys to keep one thing in mind. Uh, you know, uh, and I have a question, right? What is success? How do you define success, right? So you know, um, I have uh, this gentleman here. Um, he's gonna talk about what he does. Uh, before that, why don't you uh, give us an introduction? Like, um, what's your name? Um, where you from? Background? Mm-hmm. Hey guys, how you doing? Um, how you doing? Cool. I'm Carlos Molina. I'm a native New Yorker based in Queens. All right, cool, cool, cool. And um, what is it that you do? I'm a special ed teacher in New York City Public Schools. Okay, okay. All right. How How is that going for you? It, it has its ups and downs. It's, it's stressful. It's good, but it's it's rewarding. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, What What inspired you? How, how do you get started with, uh, yeah, with being a teacher? Well, the what inspired me to be a teacher was that I grew up like as a student who was struggling in the classroom okay. um and it was basically because i had a hard time paying attention i had a hard time like processing things okay and you know like the way they taught me was kind of different from like what um what i want to teach my kids okay. so like, how so how so because they would it would kind of be like a they would kind of teach you in a drill sergeant type of way. They would be like, oh, do this, do this. Okay. Um, if you don't do this, you're going to fail. But they would never bother explaining to me. And they would never, like, bother adapting the lesson to make it fun or make make it interesting. Okay. Was it was it like this for all your teachers? Like, how, how was it for you? Because I know me growing up, I, um, at some point, uh, like, after, like, well, sixth grade, junior high school, I would start having different teachers uh, in different periods. Um, and then, you know, like, I'll get some teachers who who just teach differently than others. So, like, um, was it like that for you? Or, did, like, do you feel like every single teacher was just drill sergeant, you know, mode? It was, no, we, there were always those few handful of teachers who okay. were very compassionate about it. But uh, most of the teachers were kind of drill sergeants. Um, I know that they meant better, and in no way am I criticizing them. Like, I'm sure most of them had good intentions. Yeah. Most of them wanted you to do good, you know what I mean? Yeah. But the the way that they did it without explaining why, that that's what I always wondered my whole life. Yeah, like, yeah. People tell you to do things, but they never bother explaining you why. They never bothered showing you the reason. Mm-hmm. No. Okay, I got you. I rem- I don't know why. Like this just came to my mind. I had um in junior because I was well, I guess since I started talking about junior high school, I had this math teacher, man, and you know, like I know he meant well. You could kind of tell that he's a good guy, but when he like first he didn't speak proper English. So it was it was challenging for us to understand what he's saying. And when we would address it to him, he would say, well, we're talking numbers, you know, so, you know, numbers have the same language. And I'm like, yeah, bro, but like, I don't understand you. Like, you know, when you so I, I, I did go through that challenge. I, I mean, I don't know why I thought about that, but uh, he was also kind of like a drill sergeant where he would teach you. And he's like, well, if you can't learn, you know, like you just can't learn. Oh, he will repeat the same thing. And it's like, I'm not being helped in this. And then, you know, like afterwards I met, uh, you know, I met other teachers in, in high school that they knew, you know, they, they saw that I was struggling and then they would sit with me and say, okay, tell me what you're struggling with. And then, you know, they'll, 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 give me more and divide a time to try to like teach me stuff. And, you know, I, and I ended up pre- appreciating that, but I under that when you said that I is, is what I thought about. So, so yeah, man, like, and you do get those couple of gems 
which it, it kind of helps you, you know, like, and that's where I wanted to get at. That's why I mentioned that you, you sometimes you do get some gems of people that, you know, that they're willing to go the extra mile and that they're more understanding. But mm -hmm. yeah, so hey, thank you for that, man. Um, So, eh, so at what point did you decide? You said, you know what, man, I need to be a teacher. Like what, what, what point was it that you was like, okay, you know, eh, or did you see a teacher that, that did certain things for you? Or like, how, how did that go about? So when I was in college, um, it was kind of similar, except like the professors were instruct. And the thing is what people don't realize, there's a huge difference between teaching and instruction. Yeah. This, this is a very important topic. The professors in my college, they instructed, you know what I mean? For students to learn, you had to teach. And, like, what inspired me to want to be a teacher is that, like, <clears throat> I saw, like, how students were inattentive. They weren't paying attention. But they were very good at other things, like basketball, baseball, video games, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of was like, okay. Um, oh, and another thing that inspired me to be a teacher, very important, was that the many teachers and professors in general, they only pay attention to the A students in the front. They don't pay attention to the C students. They don't pay attention to the students who are struggling. And that kind of makes students, certain students feel a type of way. So like me growing up being that underdog, if you want to call it, yeah. that, that student who was like struggling, I wanted to put everyone like in the spotlight I didn't want there to be such a thing as, oh, anyone is better than anyone. I don't believe in anyone being better than anyone or anyone being worse than anyone. Yeah. I believe that everyone is beautiful in their own unique type of way. So that kind of inspired me to go into a special education field okay. and find the best of every student. That's awesome, man. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Like, like you went from being the guy, the stereotypical, like, oh, this, you know, this guy is not teaching, so he probably ain't gonna make it. So now you like, now you're in in, in the front lines as far as uh, uh, the teachers, and you're now you know teaching the uh, you know like special uh, students, which they're you know it doesn't mean that they're not intelligent. It just means that you know they're going through you know through certain life aspects you know that that you know that it just makes them different. So you know like I, I, that part I do understand and and, and I actually can relate to that. Uh, so you you want to add anything in? No, no. Okay, I'm, I might as well. Yeah, I was gonna ask you that before. Like you were saying that with certain uh, teacher, they just pay attention at the A uh, A grade student. Do you feel that they did that because the A they felt like if they could learn the what I'm teaching, the, the other students should be able to learn it? Because I know I do. I've seen this in my life too. That I see that certain teacher treat the A a great student much better than the D. Uh, and do you feel like that the teacher think that the D students are not listening? Is there for something? Or was that a motivation for becoming a teacher? Well, yes. Part of it is apex fallacy. Like, you believe that because the greatest uh, small percentage of people can do it, everyone can do it. And that's not true. So the, a lot of people fall into that, not just teachers, but people in general. They fall into that. And it's a force of habit, so, you know. But the second thing is unfortunate, like, they have to pay attention to the A students because those are the ones who are going to keep their job. If wow. they waste too much time on, like, other students, they're not going to, like, have time on it. And then at the end of the day, unfortunately, is numbers. But they have to... The goal is you have to find a way to work around all of the students. Because yeah. the way I think of it is like as far as a teacher, it's it's easier to teach to want to work with the A student because it's like they're in understanding of what you're doing. So it's like if this A student can understand it, why are you struggling? Yeah. So it's like it's kind of like it makes their job easier. They're not they're not putting themselves in a position of challenge. Oh, this person is struggling. I'm gonna challenge myself to to have this person learn. But uh, also, it's part of yeah. the system. Like he was saying, one of the reasons he, the, like he said the teacher focus on the A student because 
a teacher also have a goal. They're supposed to have a certain average grade for. Mm, I'm guessing yeah. for they're supposed to have like an average grade per class, right? So if you know that certain students gonna do well, and you wanna keep your grade high, I think that's one of the reasons. And that's I think it's part with the system too, like. The system will focus more on the grade than making sure that every single story got their own particular way of teaching. I guess am I saying it right? Because if you are, if you if you're a teacher that's trusting you that your class is supposed to be this grade, you're not going to focus too much on the other story, and that's messed up too. Yeah, yeah. So I yeah. mean, if you want to add something yeah. to that, you can let me know. Yeah, I can add something. All right. Um. And a huge part of the reason is because the quote-unquote C students, and it's not even necessarily C students, but students who are not used to like the teacher style, yeah. they they won't see a reason for trying. There's not enough motivation except, oh, like being forced to do something. But why? Because yeah. they see it as a chore. You know what I mean? There's little yeah, reason. Yeah. And then when you go online or like you go on like, you know, the world around you, you see, like, so many, like, college dropouts doing better than, like, people who have a master's degree. Yeah, and, then, and we're seeing and, that now. Yeah. I mean, uh, thanks for the, to social media and the internet. Because yeah. back then, all you was was scared. Oh, you ain't going to make it. Yeah. You know, like, you, yo, what you going to do? You're going you're gonna, to um, be the janitor in the school? And, you know, janitors don't even, they, they make money here. So it's like, you know, so that was, like, a misconception that they put out in the first place, um, yeah. you know. I mean, uh, there, there's certain genres that 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 could make a, a a certain amount of salary, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Like I was saying, like, but like what they don't realize is that even to be like a YouTuber or a streamer or some dude who you know made it in life, you still need the fundamental education. Yeah, you still need the skills to make it. Like, you can't just go out into the world without making it or anything. Because, like, the biggest example, look at what happens to most athletes, especially NFL players. Like, 10 years after they retire, they're broke. Because yeah. they didn't get the education. They, they just followed this. They had a lot of talent. Yeah. But they didn't listen to other people and they told them, you need to be educated on this and that. Yeah. Well... So when it comes to athletes, right? Like athletes, they they end up generating generating a lot of income. So is school really teaching our students how to financially be ready? Because they not they not you know the school doesn't teach how to be an athlete. I mean, well there there is unless you're gonna go to a school that does have a you know that criteria in it, but. What I'm saying is there's no financial structure. So even so that's a problem within itself. We're not like they you know teachers teaching teaching students on how to be financially free. You know, they're teaching them on how to, you know, get a job, basically. So they they and um not that there's nothing wrong with getting a job. What I'm saying is for an athlete, that's not just a regular job. You 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 have a career for a short part amount of time. There's nobody's teaching them on how to how to set that money mm -hmm. and set it in in a, in, 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 in a right uh, path for them. If, if I'm making sense. Yeah. So it could be yeah. passive. Yeah. Um, passive income. Yeah. The problem is where yeah, we're gonna get off the topic, but like you were saying, like when they where they making certain amount, they already used to spending it, and once they retire, and they still spend it without getting the same income, that's when the situation happened. So, I mean, but I think we, yeah, he's right. But uh, both of you are right. We need to find a way. Like, if you give knowledge, guys, from, I, for me, school is really important, too. People need to of course. have an understanding. Oh, uh, damn, it's hard. I can't stop right Yeah, now. no, no, but it's also important, like, it, it, the social structure. Yes. You know, like, you know, how, how to, how to act around you know like the environment you know like you these these are things that you need to learn yeah. you know like you know how to how to how to mingle with people you know how, and they they do need a certain amount of structure the the problem becomes is that not everybody thinks the same way like you have you mm -hmm. know like and that's where the challenge comes for the teacher to want to now engage on the challenge 
I want to I want the C student to to I want to be I want to make this person an A student. How do I do that? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So so that's I mean that's my opinion on that. Oh, uh, it the uh, so let me ask you this question. Um, do you um like what are what have been the challenges that you have been facing um before and now after a pandemic? Well, we're still in the pandemic, but what are, you know has there been any challenges that you've been facing? Um, not like after a pandemic, not much, but before a pandemic, yeah. Okay, um, can you explain that? Yeah, so like, um, just gonna say a little bit about my background. Like, okay. so, um, I, I'm a, I'm a student who went to college, you know, I got my master's and, you know, I finally got my certification. Congratulations, after, man. Yeah. Thank you, man, after so many years, but... It's it's after like so many changes in life, and what I was gonna say like one important thing is you gotta be wary of the people around you. I I'm 31, and I just started being a teacher like last year. Okay. You know what I mean? I should have been a teacher like 10 years ago, hmm. but because I hung out with the wrong friends, you know. I didn't pay attention to anything in life. I didn't focus on anything. And you know what I mean? I didn't want to do any better because when you're hanging around partying and stuff, you don't really focus on the future. Yeah. yeah. So it was very hard for me to like get, like tell them that I had to leave. Mm. And sometimes you have to leave a friendship or a toxic friendship or relationship. Yeah. And and like what what was it that, what was it that clicked in you? What what made you say, you know what, I gotta change because you know, th like this happened. I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta do my thing. It's like like their priorities weren't straight. It's like you look at everyone around you. As after like, and I was friends with them for seven years. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I love them. You know, n nothing. I have nothing bad to say about them. I don't regret being friends with them. They were the best friends I've ever had, but I had to get rid of them. You know what I mean? Sometimes people think with emotions. And mm. life is about thinking logically. Si tú te lleva por los sentimientos, like you, mm. you know, you think about too much emotions, you're blinded by reality. That was what's going on. No, yeah, it makes sense, guys. We talk about it in one episode. Pe um... You know what you're gonna be by the type of person you're gonna be by the type of person you hang with. Yeah. Like if you hang with people that not think about future, it's a good chance you're not gonna think about your future. Now if you hang with people that want to change and want to do something in the future, you're gonna start thinking up the same way as them. Yeah. So it's like you say, you, it's sad that we sometimes gotta get rid of people that we like you saying that yeah. were good friend, but they all have the same vision that you had. Yeah, no, and it sucks. No, it, it like it really sucks because it's like you you want to bond with with the people because sometimes people are very important to you, but it's just like it, you get to realize that they're distracting a distraction to the path that you that you want to take. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I mean, I I, I could relate to that too, man. I do yeah, the, have something to it. Yeah, yeah. The um, the people who love you most, and this is something very important. The people who love you the most are the people who tell you what you don't want to hear. Yeah. And I'm talking about terms of constructing criticism. Yeah. I'm not talking about in terms of all oh, bashing you. And, no. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm talking about criticizing you in a way that they're telling you that they want you to do better. Yes. Like yeah. you ever heard, like you ever been to your mom's house and like she just, you know, yells at you because you haven't cleaned your room or something like that or, like, because <laughs> you're coming in late or because you know this. Yeah. And it's like you don't want to hear it, but she loves you. That's the thing that you got to realize. And mm -hmm. that's something that I never realized until I first met Nate. Because I first met Nate at a dance studio. And then he was telling me, like, yo, what's wrong with you, man? Like, why aren't you studying? Like, why are you always partying all the time? Why are you always drinking? Like, you can't be doing that. And that's when I woke up, you know, and I realized that, like, I wasn't really heading anywhere positive in life. I was just living day by day, like the YOLO life. Like, I wasn't looking at the future. And that's when I realized, you know, I had to change. And I thank Nate to this day for that. 
Oh no no, thank oh, you, man. Wow. I mean, I know I know we have talked uh, a few times, you know, and and I uh when I I remember that day because I I just saw. I kind of saw me and you at, at the at the time that you were there because I, I was hanging out with the wrong crowd as well. And I'm like, man, I, I need to make a decision. And, you know, I made a decision and that's why, you know, I started, you know, doing the, the you know, the business, trying to get around a like-minded people. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people, like, I, I don't know, like, a lot of times I see online, you know, like, people talking about how, oh, I made a decision, I'm you know, like, I did this and I, and I strived. Well, how do you get this thought to do this? It's because someone around you, right? Maybe somebody that was close to you maybe started getting a little further away is doing something that you probably, that you thinking like, yo, I, I, I want this for myself as well. So, you know, like, so that, that's, that's basically ha- what happened, man. And, and you know, like, it, it's awesome, man. And I see that you did, you did a lot of things as well, which, you know, we, we all will share that if you are, if you're willing to talk about it. So uh, thank you, man. I mean, you know, wasn't Dude. expecting that. No, it, it is. You got me like <laughs> blushing and stuff. <laughs> no, no, I mean, you might as well get the flower while you're here. So a rose, how do you say it? Huh? Yeah, well, get, get your flower yeah. when you hear a rose or something Oh, like yeah, that. yeah, roses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so no, no, thank you. you. Yeah, man. Quotes. <laughs> yeah, so, man, like. Like when I was living in Coney Island, um, you know, a neighborhood that's not that good, you know, because people think of the amusement park. No, there's <laughs> when you go down Mermaid, you know, the, the West 20s, the West 30s, old yeah. Dwyer Project, Surfside Gardens, that's not that good. I've been living there like my whole life, you know what I mean? And it wasn't a very good environment to be in. Okay. So like... There were times that I would just come home drunk, you know, like, and I would drink almost every day. And it wasn't like the casual drinking. I would just drink almost every day. I would just smoke all, almost every day. Yeah. I almost got arrested for, for smoking. You know what I mean? There were days where, like, my parents had to pick me up because wow. I was laying in the street drunk. Oh, like, wow. it, was, crazy, it, was, it was very bad. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And now I'm two years sober, no alcohol, two Congratulations, years. Oh, wow. man. Congratulations, Congratulations, yeah. Congratulations, yeah. That's awesome, bro. Um, yeah, now nah, I remember you told me when you were six months in, I'm yeah. like, yo, I, I, and I congratulate you. I'm like, yeah, man, let's, let's, uh, let's be consistent with that. Yeah. Um, so, like, after all that, I, I started working my ass off, you know, started working hard, finally. I managed to save up enough money to give my parents a down payment for their own house. Awesome. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. So now they're comfortable living in New Jersey, finally. Te amo, mami. Mi yeah. papi. All right. So, yeah. Say name. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to, the, to the parents, all right? Yeah. yeah. So I live in Glendale, Queens, a decent neighborhood. You know, all that. Any, and here's my inspiration. That anything is possible. You just got to have the mindset. So, uh, as far as I mean, now you're you're you know you're teaching your students. Um, you have a year doing so. Uh, my question to you right now will be, um, if I know that you know, like, oh, well, let me ask you this: what ha- what are you doing differently now to teach your students? Like, like, what 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 structure have you have you devised? If you don't mind sharing. Yeah. So, like, um. Instead of the normal seating arrangement where there's like all people in front, people in the back, I have it like a U formation, like a kind of auditorium formation. Okay. Because I don't believe in people being in front, people being in the back. I believe in everyone being equal. Like, I'm not, this ain't no like socialist communist, no, it ain't none of that. That's not what I'm trying to promote. I'm trying to promote that. Everyone should start equal. Everyone should have equity and should be like talented in their own ways. And one thing I do is make them do group work. So I have them do projects where like, for example, if you want to do like two plus two equals four, something like that, you know, I have them do blocks, have them build Legos and stuff like that. Mm, Have them learn, have them be active in the process each time I also make, like, let's say I have a student struggling because this is very important. Yeah. 
I give them a leadership role. And then you're asking, like, why are you giving the, the, the lowest student a leadership role? Because I want him to feel important. Mm. Like, you ever been in a job and, like, you all of a sudden got promoted and you all of a sudden feel important, like, you want to prove yourself? Yeah, yeah. That's how I want to make my students feel. So Wow. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty mm -hmm. awesome. And you, if you think about it, the C students, they end up being the boss. <laughs> like, because they, cause they, they're the ones being the boss for the A student. Yeah, but that, that's dope because <laughs> yeah. in another way, you also teach them how to be social with each other. Like, mm -hmm. like you said, like the old way, uh, like from the back, people not be social. And working in group, they could be social. And that's part of life, too. Yeah. Now, now that I see it, yeah, because you got to be able to talk, well, be uh, social in the right way. I got to be careful, yeah. I say, though. Okay. That's all. So, what about the. um? What roles do you have for the A students? You know, like, because, you know, we, we trying to make everybody equal. So what, what roles will you have for the A students? I'll, I'll make them feel equally important. You know what yeah. I mean? If it depends if they're ahead or behind. If they're ahead, you know, I give them either more advanced material or I tell them, you know, teach the other students or like okay. help us out. You okay. Know what I mean? To create like a system where you're helping people. Yeah. That's pretty dope, man. And um, how how is that going? Like, are are are, are you getting um a higher rate of, of of students passing or like, how how is that? Like, is that still a challenge? It's the like I'm gonna be straight up honest. Yeah. The the improvements in terms of test score is increasing a little bit. It's not okay. a lot, but it's a little mm -hmm. because you know there's a difference with testing. But yeah. I have seen seen students way more engaged than before. Okay. And I believe that's the important part in my my mm -hmm. opinion. For the yeah. students to be engaged, for the students to be aware that the um, the there's more to life than just standardized testing. Yeah, awesome. That's mm -hmm. pretty dope. What what level do you teach? Fourth and fifth grade. Fourth and grade. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. That's 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 pretty dope, man. So um a so I know that, that students are learning from you, right? Um, do you learn from your students? Yeah, absolutely, all the time. Um, my first year was, I cringe thinking about my first year. Yeah. <laughs> my, my first year was the teacher that I don't want to be and the teacher that I will never be again. Mm. Like My first okay. teacher, I, I was that charter school drill sergeant. Like I was barking at students. You know, I was, you know, yelling at students for everything. I was giving them punishments for everything. I mean, my classroom management was S tier, but, you know, it, the students, they, they didn't feel engaged. They didn't feel, like, confident about themselves. You know what I mean? And it's not that I didn't, I didn't have any bad intentions, just like the teachers that taught me. I had no bad intentions. I wanted them to do better, but it was the way that I taught them, that I barked at them, that it wasn't right. Yeah, it's crazy because um, you see how um, this is not the teacher you wanted to become, but you became that. Why? Because you got programmed to 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 think this way. This is how you got. This is how you you taught. Like you you got taught on mm -hmm. this is the way of teaching. Yes. And then like sometimes it takes that time for you to do this work to be like wait hold up man i don't like this <laughs> you know what i mean like i gotta re i gotta i gotta i gotta rearrange myself so um you know like so, so basically uh you did you did this you, you you became what you didn't like and then you was just like all right time to to readjust and that's when you i guess you came with the formula of of doing the the youth structure mm -hmm. right so yeah, that's, and it's crazy. I mean, uh, and this is where we gotta learn. Like, um, we are we are a habit of of our environment, and this is and this is the point of all of it. We have to like break out of it, and understand, you know, like what it is that you really want. I mean, it's much harder, but the but the reward is much bigger, right? Mm -hmm. It's much higher. So, um, nah, man, this is great, man. It's awesome. Hey, does do you have any um? like mentors anybody that you follow you know like um you know uh, throughout the journey um 
honestly not anyone like remote like like in person like i have you when that's one he of thanks, them man, like, my, this guy man my this parents guy make me blush every time man uh, i yeah. i listen to like a bunch of youtubers like, mm -hmm. You know, on my like my time off when I'm like biking and stuff. Okay, you know? okay. Yeah. Well, the type of YouTuber like is professional stuff or just think about teaching. No, like about life in general, cause oh. you could always learn things. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. Oh, uh, so all right. So I mean, you you you're now a teacher. You got yourself well, your parents into well, you got a real estate with your parents. Yeah. Oh. Uh, is there any other plans that you have? Yeah, like eventually when I get to straight, like, you know, I get these things straightened out, you know, and I get like my back up on my feet more. Like I plan on opening a two grand business, you know, okay. for students. Oh, wow. That's yeah, pretty awesome, man. Because I want to teach them in ways that, you know, the classroom like is restricts you from. That's mm. adult, man. That's inspiring mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, like, um, right now you're doing this career, which you enjoy, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a nine to five job that you enjoy. But now you're looking into a tutoring business, which is going to be your business that you're going to eventually own. And um, and, and it's a TC student. So that's, yo, that's that's pretty awesome, man. Mm -hmm. I love it, bro. I love mm -hmm. it, bro. Yeah. And, you know, I do, uh, do appreciate your time, bro. And... And I don't know, you want to add something else? No, no, I'm glad that you're doing it because, like he said, one of the reasons that he's wanting to do his own tour business because there's restriction. I hope people don't realize when you teach, you got to do a certain amount of things. Like, if you do your own tour, you got more power to do more with the student, right? So, and, and I know that you want to help because your experience as a kid. So, this is incredible. Yeah, yeah, no, no, pretty dope, pretty dope. Uh, so, uh, you know, you can write it up. Okay, so before we end, before we end it, do you have like an advice that you got to give to our listener? Yeah, so like this is something I was telling um, um, Nate that we were talking to a while ago. Um, the goal should be um finding happiness. You know what I mean? Um, not always, all of the time in like what you're working in. Are you going to be happy? Are you going to succeed? So in general, like what I tell people is to spend any free time that you have looking for things that you, you know, you're good at, you know, things that you, you should, you can do, like things you're talented in, things that you're going to like. That's why employers ask for experience. It's not because, oh, because I want someone who knows what he's doing. It's, it's not even just that. It's they want someone who who tripped over his own foot, you know, at some point and can handle that situation yeah. and knows what to do in that situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's what you should do. Like, because you never know, like, if you're going to succeed or fail until you try it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I have before, like, I've worked here, like, I failed in a couple businesses and a, in a couple jobs before. Like, I have the one that I have now. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. I figure out, oh, like, I don't like this. You know, I don't like that. Like, I don't like it when, you know, people are breathing down my neck every minute. Or, like, or, for example, I don't like working year-round or something like that. It could be anything in general. You know what I mean? Find out what works best for you and find out, like, what you do best in. And then, you know, see, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go that. And then go on from there. Okay. Wow. okay. That's perfect. Yeah. And a great knowledge and power that you give to our listener. Mm -hmm. So before we end, I just want to tell you, if you like what we're doing, you can follow us at levelupsuccesspodcast.poppy.com. If not, you could listen to us in any app like AHA Radio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Hopefully in the future Pandora pa app. And <laughs> we keep yeah. mentioning Pandora, man. I'm about, I know we have uh, some yeah. that have a technical issue with Pandora, but we're gonna be definitely we definitely all in any even Amazon music and audible. We there too. All right, awesome, awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. So this is uh Neth and Truth and 
We out here to level up to success, all right? So, deuces. Peace. Peace out, man. Peace. All right.